Hi everyone, welcome to Paul's Workshop. Today I'm carving this sign for my son who just got promoted to sergeant. It has a lot of fine detail in this badge that took a little bit of time to be able to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it today. Let's get started. Today I'm going to be carving this uh, sheriff's badge and you can look at it and see there's a lot of very fine, fine detail and the letters in this center portion is very, very small. Now what I'm going to be doing is carving this very shallow. I'm only going to be carving this at about 0 .08 inches deep and I am going to use an eighth inch bit in this flat area to be able to do, in essence, the two-stage carving. I want to clear out the bulk of that. I don't want to use the V-bit. Then we're going to come back and do the V-bit and carve the rest of the sign. And then, after that, we're going to switch over to another workpiece and cut out the outline. And this will cut all the way through. So the first thing I want to do, and you can see this is very light, so it's going to cut a very shallow amount. But I want to go ahead and set this up where my XY axis is on the center right down here. So to do that, I've highlighted everything. I'm going to go up to the top, hit Shape. That is already selected in the center. And I'm going to put my XY axis at zero. And there we have it. Now I'm going to be using my glue and tape method to be able to hold this down. And I'm using this auxiliary waste board to be able to make sure that if I do cut all the way through, it will cut into this board and not into my actual waste board on the X-Carve. Now, because this is a piece of poplar, I know that it's not going to be 100% flat. And for that reason, what I'm going to do is take this three-quarter inch bit and I'm going to go ahead and just basically do a skim coat over the entire surface to make sure that it's totally flat. And that's important to do when you're carving something as shallow as the carving that I'm about to do. The first thing that I'm going to do on this is actually set the XY axis. And that way, when I put in the large bit, it'll still be centered and as I go through the bit changing process my XY axis will stay exactly the same. To be able to set up this project to be able to skim the entire surface I'm opening up a rectangle and I'm going to change the shape of this where it's going to be and I'm going to lock this and I'm going to make this where it is 12 inches and that's a little bit larger than the actual size of my board. My board is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So this will ensure being able to cover the entire board. The next thing that I want to be able to do is reduce the cut depth. I only want to skim just the very surface so I'm going to skim this at about 0 .04 of an inch. So it's going to be very very light. The last thing is I do want the XY axis to be in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and select my point being a center and my XY axis being zero. Now with that done I can go ahead and start to carve. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the raster because this is going to be a fill cutting the entire surface and I want to be able to cut this with the grain. So I'm going to select the raster on the X axis to be able to cut crossways rather than the offset where it goes and cuts starting from the center and working out. This should give a much smoother cut. The next thing that I have to do is change the bit size <clears throat> and the bit for this is 0.75 of an inch. Now you can see that that was actually in millimeters. So let's go back and reset that and set that for the inches 
that is 0.75 so I'm going to go ahead and select that now and now it's showing correct so it's important to be able to check each aspect of this so there's going to be the light skim coat I don't really care about the size of the material but just to be able to be on the safe side we'll make this 12 by the 12 And now you can see where it's just going to cut in that one corner. Let's go ahead and preview that. And now you can see the whole thing, how it's going to carve. And it's going to take about 30 minutes to do that. And I think what we'll be doing is speeding this up. 30 inches per minute is going to be slow. To be able to do this skim coat over the entire surface, you've got to make sure that your CNC machine is set where it's perfectly flat as well. The gantry needs to be completely level and the actual router itself needs to be 100% plumb. If that is not the case, especially on a 3 quarter inch bit, it is going to show and cut at an angle, and that's not what you're looking for. As this is cutting, you can see that it is cutting very flat, and that there's no ridges in this, and that's what you're looking for. You can't have ridges. If you do, that means you're not square. Okay, now you can see that the board is completely flat and it's extremely smooth. Looks great. That looks a lot better than the manufacturer's finish when I bought the board. Now I went ahead and changed bits and we're starting to do the roughing pass. And this is a down cut eighth inch bit to be able to do this. This is a small area, but it's not going to take long to do it at all. The most important part on this roughing pass is to be able to make sure that the bottom is completely flat. Now with this poplar wood, you can see that it does have some tear out. This flat bit is definitely going to give a better look than trying to do this clearing with the V-bit. The V-bit that I'm using is a 60 degree bit and it has an extremely sharp point. So it would be very difficult to be able to get a true flat bottom to the surface. Okay, the roughing pass is now finished. And you can see all it did was round this pocket and around some of the fine detail in the center. And that's all I wanted to be able to do because I want this bottom to be as flat as possible and the V-bit just doesn't do a good job with that. Okay, I now have the 60 degree V-bit in place and I'm still using the same XY axis. Now I did go through and show all the detail on how I got to this point, but I, this sign started off in Inkscape where I did the SGV file from the file that was given to me by my son. And then I had to actually break this apart in easel and separate each of the letters and take the letters out that were there because they were just horrible and place in my own letters one by one to be able to get this to carve. The next thing that I want to be able to show you is on the tool path, you can see how it's bouncing from left to right, left to right. That is a definite inefficient use of the tool paths, but that is one of the shortcomings of the Easel Pro uh, software. There are other softwares that I could have used, but I chose to do the Easel for this demonstration. Okay, I've cut out now around the circumference of this sign and pulling away the different pieces. This glue and tape method really holds well. Okay, once I took this off the CNC machine, I went ahead and spray painted it with a gold spray can. And quite frankly, I wish I had sealed it first, but I didn't. So we're gonna see how this does. So I put two coats of the gold spray paint on it and now I'm going to put a black wash over it and wipe off the excess. So let's see how that does. To be able to do the painting, all I'm doing is just using a small brush with the acrylic black paint to be able to flood the carvings. And I'm making sure that it gets all the way down into the bottom of the different grooves. And once that is completely flooded, then I'll just be able to wipe it off. Now, if you've been following my videos for a while, you know that this is a different technique than what I have used before. 
Typically what I will do is start at the lowest level, which is the bottom of the different grooves, fill it with the paint, let it dry, sand it, and then go ahead and finish it. But because I wanted this project to be gold in color, it was important to be able to change the process and use this method where it actually was sprayed first and then flood the different areas. Once those areas are completely flooded like this, I just take some water and a paper towel and with the paper towel moistened, then I'll be able to just wipe off the areas and it'll reveal a nice beautiful area that has the paint in the grooves and not on the surface. And you will notice that the gold is toned down just a little bit. It's a little bit softer and that's what I'm looking for. Now I went ahead and did each section the same exact way where I flooded the, the area with the paint and then wiped it off with the damp paper towel. Once that was done, you can see the results, which I think turned out quite nice. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.